So guys, did that previous clip resonate with you at all? Driving standards and PCC on console have been shocking. Instead of getting frustrated with it, I thought I'd make a video just going through all the annoyances with the game. The game is amazing. Love it. Can't get enough of it. But some people are coming over from Forza or other games. And it's not just new guys, it's all the drivers as well. And standards are shocking. Everybody knows public lobbies, what you're going to get. But then people want to join leagues to get away from these public lobbies. But then continue or want to carry on driving like they're in the publics. In the background is a video of me in the black Porsche. Absolutely murdering myself at T1 at Indianapolis. And having to make my way back through the grid. So I just leave this play so I could just talk about the subject. Um, I got mega frustrated recently trying to drive tidy, give people room, not take people out, and you just get back ended. Oh my, oof, that was a close one. They played with the guy behind me, didn't see much of that coming. This guy here, yeah, he ruined qualifying in white McLaren. But yeah, that video of me going out of rouge, people parked on racing lines, looking to take you out just because they've crashed. I don't get it, never understood it. A lot of people come to the game with no knowledge, and I get it, you know. Everybody's got to start somewhere. But I don't understand why people want to jump into a very competitive league with poor driving standards, poor skill, poor knowledge, and then just continue to wreck everybody. I don't get it. For one, people need to understand the leagues that they're joining. Some leagues are very, very competitive. Um, if you're starting out, I would suggest trying to find a league where you have to be ranked and you have to put a time lap in so you can see how fast or slow you are before you accept it on the grid because then that will let you know where you are. Like some people will do a couple of weeks, a couple of months on the game, get some good results in public lobbies and think, right, that's it, I'm okay, let's go. And then find themselves on the grid with three quarters of the grid, four, five, six, ten seconds a lap quicker than them. And then this then frustrates them and they just end up taking people out because in their head they thought they were fast. I did it. Most people do it. You think you're fast and you get on and then you get your ass handed to you. But learn from it. Don't go crazy and start taking people out out of frustration. I get it. Like racing, you know, the idea is to be in front of the guy in the guy in front. But if you can't do it, then you can't just take people out. It's just it just blows my mind. And a lot of it is because people are not coming from any kind of motorsport background. I've done nothing professionally in motorsport, but I followed it, watched it, been with friends that get involved. Well, it's been a part of my life for years. But some people don't have that background, so they need to learn. They need to find these things out before you uh, get out on track. Sounds a bit all doom and gloom, but it's not. Like, look at the graphics on this game. And the racing experiences you can have is you know, second to none. I've been through them all. I'm in my 40s. I started on Atari, Nintendo's, and Topo Race Drive, um, Need for Speed, and Gran Turismo, Forza, all that, and then, you know, those consoles. Never really had PC. Well, PCs weren't good enough when I was younger to be able to do this. Now they are. But this now, ACC, is almost the pinnacle. It's like 
six year old, seven year old. If you get on track with a bunch of guys, like minded, fast, but have etiquette, you know, don't need to win every race, don't need to be moving on every corner. Like, it's some of the best racing you'll ever find. It was just finding that niche. I've been there, I've done it, been kicked out of leagues, left leagues. And a lot of it is down to the league owners. We try to please too many people. Like, instead of having a competitive grid, good drivers with good etiquette, they just want to bulk the numbers up. And then you end up with 20, 30, and maybe only five to 10 are any good. And then the rest are just, well, shocking. But this is where owners need to take responsibility. Where I said earlier that people should be putting lap times in and being ranked before going on track. This used to be everywhere but now it seems to be dying off and they just want to fill, fill the grid, get as many people on track, make your league look good. But then for the guys that are in it for the long haul and want to do complete championships and want to battle for positions, just end up getting frustrated by the assholes that turn up, take you out and piss off. It's like, so yeah, league owners, you need to take responsibility. And some of the incident reporting, yeah, they put an incident report in and they find it against you or against the other driver and whatever, but it doesn't become, there's no education along with it. It's like, right, you were at fault, you took him out, da 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 da. If you can clearly see that somebody is new, just a brief description, help them out, tell them where they went wrong, point it out. But anyway, that's what this video stroke channel is more about. Instead of getting frustrated and taking my anger out and being a keyboard warrior, I thought, right, let's put some videos together and help some people out. Show them what they should be doing and what to look out for. Um, I'm not going to do it all in this. This is just a quick one for today. I suppose I could follow this through. I did go through most of the pack, but they were all pretty good. This race, this is the GHR Tuesday League. I, I didn't find any problem in this grid. You know, blue flags come out and... Well, there's no blue flags. I'm at the back of the track. At the back of the grid. No blue flags needed, you know. But in the second race, they came along back markers with the blue flags and everybody was, to the most part, pretty good. This guy didn't want to give up his position, but that's fair enough. We're fighting for position. Did I lunge here? Yeah. Maybe I did. Did have a bit of a lunge, but the Porsche's good on the brakes anyway. He seemed to be. And this is the thing. Number 52 there, he seemed to be for a lap that and a half, two laps, so he knew I was kind of quicker than him. And when you know that, it's like, why? Why have you got to defend to the hilt? It's going to get past you at some point, and if you're going to defend like a crazy person, you're just going to end up having an accident. So it's my race and his race win. Really. Um, I should click to the video on race two where I get overtaken. Going down the street here, um, guy in a Nissan, way quicker than me. I was leading, I was leading the race, and I could see him coming, he'd been coming, there he is in the background on this. Two, two tracks, two cars back, three cars back. He must have had a bad start on this race. But he was, he was all over me for three laps. I defended for a bit, and then I just gave in and said, look, you know, he's gonna go past. Either I let him pass or I risk us both getting taken out. And there's just so little of that these days. Not many people have that attitude. Big egos and small brains, decision making. It's like you're going to lose that position. Just give it up. Maybe recoup, come back. Maybe they'll make a mistake. Maybe they'll burn their tires out. Fight another day. Defend into the hilt and then 
getting both your races ruined. It's just, I don't get it. I don't understand. It. Anyway, that's my rant for now. Come back, click the link, subscri subscribe, and uh, see future videos. I'm gonna try and up production value and uh, put some more details in. Here we go. As promised, this is the start. Is it the start? Yeah, lap two of the second race I mentioned. Here we are with Brown, I think it is, in the Nissan behind me. I'm leading, and he's all over me. Um, he came through at the end of the first race as well. He pit me at the end. I fell asleep, made my way up the third, and just eased off. And the last lap, he sniped me. Fair play to him. He was rapid. But like you can see here, uh, I'm out the front, and he's he's just all over me. He's got the run here down the street. Now here, this is the kind of thing. If you defend in this position, you already need to be on the inside. I stayed wide. I knew he was going to take me, so I just let him through. I could have turned in on him there, what a lot of people would have done in public lobbies. But I gave it up. I knew he was coming. He was faster than me. I was more worried about 51 behind me in the Ferrari, to be honest. But just that there, that situation. Ooh, big tank slap, man. He was, you know, from the off. I could see that he already had my numbers. So if I'd have carried on defending him, I'd have risked taking him out. Both of us getting taken out. And my main rival in the championship, but they're in a white Ferrari. Would have jumped into first. Took loads of points off me. And I'd have been frustrated. Two laps of racing. Whereas instead, I let him through. Kick my tyres a bit. Try and control the Ferrari behind me for a bit. And see how it plays out. You know, maybe... Maybe the guy in the Nissan burns his tyres out. I was hoping the way that he was going, but as it was, it was just a skill issue. He had more than me. It was nothing to do with tyres. <laughs> but, oh, oh, there you go, look. Ferrari spun out. Oh, yeah, that's right, he did. I forgot about that. That's right, I knuckle down a bit now and try and catch him back up, but I think this is as close as I was to him all race. Until the last lap, I think I got back close to him, but... 10, 11 laps, just two, three seconds between us all the way. But see, Indianapolis is good because it's a good learning situation. Like I said, I stayed left on purpose. I could see that he was gaining on me. If I'd have gone on the inside, he'd have tried to outbreak on the outside. I would have had a break late. He would have cut back in and we would have probably collided if not at T1, and at T2. Anyway guys, just a quick one to show you what to do and what not to do. Just live to race another day, isn't it? Come back, have another go, have some fun. Stop dying on your sword and taking each other out no need. Peace out.